these two are parietal bones one on each side and this bone also a flat bone having outer table inner table and intervening diploid tissue or spongy part and it is ossified in membrane that means membranous bone then what are the presenting parts of the bone then i will hold the bone in anatomical position you know there are two surfaces one convex surface or called external surface and one concave surface which is internal surface and four borders this is anterior border or called frontal border because this border articulate with the frontal bone in front this is posterior border or called the occipital border this one because this will articulate with the occipital bone behind so this is occipital border superior border which is the longest border called sagittal border and this is inferior border or called squamosal border it is shorter than the superior border and there are four angles this is anterior superior angle at the breakma then anterior inferior angle called the sphenoidal angle which forms the point of terrian and this is a very sharp and this is posterior superior angle we found the lambda with the occipital bone and posterior inferior angle it forms the asterion also called the mastoid angle so frontal sphenoidal then this, this is occipital and this is mastoid there are four angles of these four borders which border is the thickest and longest dentated sagittal border this one this is the thickest border and also the longest border this is the external surface here on the external surface the features are this elevation this rounded elevation this is called parietal tuber or parietal eminence or parietal prominence what are the importance of this parietal prominence number 1 it acts as a useful landmark for craniometry this is parietal eminence of this side and parietal eminence of this side so maximum transverse diameter measured from the one eminence to the other this is number one importance number two ossification of parietal bone begins at this eminence number three opposite to this eminence lies the supramarginal and angular gyrus of the cerebral cortex there are two lines superior and inferior temporal line the superior temporal line gives attachment to the epicranial aponeurosis and the inferior temporal line and the surface below it it gives attachment to the temporalis muscle in what the structures passing through this foramen here sometimes present this foramen this is called the parietal foramen this foramen it is close to the upper border or close to the sagittal suture but here this foramen is absent is not visible but here you can see this foramen this is called parietal foramen and the structure passing through this is an emissary vein which connects the superior sagittal sinus which is present inside with the veins of the scalp and occasionally a branch of the occipital artery internal surface this is concave and here you will see impression for the cerebral gyri and some granular fovea for the adrenal granulations and a groove close to the antero inferior uh, angle running upwards and backwards this groove is the groove for the anterior division of middle meningeal vessels and another group from the posterior part also this is for the posterior meningeal vessels that means artery and vein then question is whether the meningeal vessels are extradural or intradural obviously both the artery and veins are extradural but of these two structures artery and vein which forms the group artery or vein the answer is it is the veins that means the middle meningeal veins they are close to the bone so they form the group 
not the artery. It is a frequently asked question. And if you are asked to draw a line on the parietal bone, which corresponds to the central sulcus of the brain, you know, inside is the brain. So you have to draw a line on the internal surface so that this line corresponds to the central sulcus. How to draw? You take the superior border, the superior border, anterior superior angle. So you take a point about 4 to 5 centimeter behind this on the superior border, number 1. Then if you draw a line downwards and forwards here in this way for about 7.5 centimeter. This line corresponds to the central sulcus of the brain, articulation of this bone. The anterior border articulates with the frontal bone, this posterior border articulates with the occipital bone, the superior border, this one, it articulates with the parietal bone of opposite side and the inferior border here, this is inferior border. But here, this is inferior border. It is very conspicuous in appearance. How? This border is thin. It is beveled here. And it articulates from anterior to posterior by three bones. What are these bones? From before backwards, anteriorly here, is the greater ring of sphenoid. Then, squamous part of temporal bone here and behind is the mastoid part of temporal bone. This is the parietal bone and here it articulates with the, this is the ring of sphenoid bone here, then this is temporal bone, this is temporal bone and here also it is temporal bone. It is mastoid part of, this is mastoid process, so mastoid part of temporal bone. This is squamous part of temporal bone and this is greater ring of sphenoid bone. So lower border articulates with these three bones. It is very important. It is commonly asked in the examination also. So to differentiate inferior border and superior border very easy. Superior border it is serrated and thick but inferior border it is beveled and smaller and it articulates with the three bones. It articulates with the corresponding bone of the opposite side. Close to the anterior angle, anterior inferior angle, this is the groove for the middle meningeal vessels. Posterior inferior angle, there is a sulcus for the sigmoid sinus. Yes, if you see this bone, this is the groove. This groove for the sigmoid sinus. So, in this way, you can identify the four angles. The four angles corresponds to the four fontanelles. The anterior superior angle, Bregma, posterior superior angle, lambda, posterior inferior angle, asterian, and anterior inferior angle, terian. So there are six fontanelles: one, two, two posterior inferior, two anterior inferior. Total six fontanelles are there. Then which parts of the bones are the last to ossify? The answer is that four angles of the bone where you will get the fontanelles, that area ossify last. And last to ossify is the bregma. One and a half years of age, this fontanelle closes and converts into bone. Before that, it was membranous. But at birth, all the six fontanelles you will get, it is membranous, not converted to bone. I will uh, show you how to hold the bone in anatomical position. Now I know this is anterior inferior angle, so it is anterior side. This is the group for the sigmoid sinus, so it is the posterior inferior angle, posterior side. The inferior border, it is sharp and beveled and smaller than the upper border, so this is the upper border. Convex surface facing outside and convex concave inside. So this is the parietal bone of right side. So this is the anatomical position of the parietal bone of left side, this is parietal bone of right side. And when I articulate these two bones here, inside, close to the upper border, there is a sulcus, half on this side and half on this side. So 
it is incomplete in one bone but when they articulate the sulcus becomes complete one and loses the superior sagittal sinus and on the margin of the sinus you will get the attachment of falc cerebri. Falc cerebri it is a process of dura mater which extends downwards.